Hey there, and welcome to the Life in Germany channel. I am Jenna, and here on my channel, you will find all of my stories and tips and tricks to moving on over here to Germany. Now today is a topic that we're gonna talk about that I know is kind of like one of those topics that we don't always wanna talk about, but bear with me guys, I promise it's not gonna be boring and this video is not specifically for expats or internationals moving to Germany, but for Germans alike, because there are a lot of new things going on in the world of electricity here in Germany. And I have asked an expert to jump on a call with me today. We will hop on over and meet him shortly, but I'm gonna go through a bunch of questions that you guys have had, that I have had personally. I often share my tips and tricks to finding the best electricity prices. Now I like to say to go to a Vergleich website and go through and see where you can get the best deal. But unfortunately, the fact of the matter is now, there are so many opportunities for electricity companies to screw you over, <laughs> that yes, while this is a great option to compare your prices, you do have to be really, really careful. I recently switched my electricity provider from one of the cheapest ones that I found personally on one of these Preisvergleich websites to an entirely new company that I have heard great things about from both Germans and internationals. But for me, the biggest thing was that you can contact them and be like, hey, like, can I get a discount here? Or do you have any coupon codes or whatnot and besides they refer a friend code where you can get I believe at the moment it's 35 euros starting bonus they don't have any coupon codes and I was like what and they straight up were like Jenna we're not here to to compete with everybody else on the market and say we're gonna give you this much off this month and then screw you over in the long run we don't offer you discounts because we are offering you as cheap as it possibly comes. And we're gonna talk to Carl from Ostrom now to go through all of these different options that we have. And I really, really hope that our chat with Carl will allow you to reevaluate your options, to understand what options you have. Obviously not just saying go switch to Ostrom, but actually giving you some really good quality saving tips. Hi, I'm Carl, one of the co-founders of Ostrom. So I focus on the marketing and product side together with my co-founder, Matthias, who's the CEO. Yeah, we're definitely trying to make green energy easy and affordable in Germany. And in English, I think that was for me <laughs> the most important thing that you guys offer, which was amazing. So let's get right into it. Electricity is kind of like a, a touchy subject right now in Germany. On average here in Germany right now for 2022, what do electricity prices really look like? So what happened with electricity prices in Germany is that there's been this thing called like the EEG levy, which is essentially like an environmental tax. You pay the transmission fees, you pay the power generation. If you look at your typical energy bill, actually like 60, 70% of that could be like taxes and levies, which is, I think, sometimes kind of surprising for internationals coming to Germany. I think what we've really seen right now is that it's been steady for a long time. And then the coronavirus pandemic, first of all, kind of like threw the demand down. So what happened March or April 20. 20, oil was negative because they were like, we have too much of the stuff. We're going to pay people to store it somewhere. So nobody was buying energy, producing energy, making those investments. What happened in 2021, vaccines are done, done in record time. So demand picked up. It's kind of like an engine. You can't just like be like, okay, let's turn it back on. Historically, those prices were never reached before. And obviously you have the Russia-Ukraine crisis happening, which obviously threatens supply. I would kind of like preload already one question that people usually ask a lot in their comment section. If I have green energy, how come oil and gas like impacts it? And I I think it's just kind of like the simple supply and demand situation where people who would have bought oil and gas now can't, but mm -hmm. they still need energy. So they're trying to buy it somewhere. So they're saying like, hey, I'm going to pay a bit more for that green energy than somebody who's already getting it before. So a lack of supply in one area increases the price for everyone. I guess there's really no way to know if prices are going to increase above what the record highs that they've now reached or if it's going to drop significantly. I, I think if you look at like the historical prices, you would see kind of this increase in 2008, like financial crisis. Yeah. And then we had kind of like this 10, 12 really good years and then coronavirus onwards really threw everything. We always say that unprecedented is the most used word uh, since 2020, right? <laughs> so that's really kind of what, what happened and it's really hard to tell. I think 
people who were used to some of the stability. It's not happening with grocery prices right now. It's not happening with energy. I think what we really focus on a lot is being reactive. One question that I've always asked myself, like you mentioned, as an international moving to Germany, it's so mind-boggling to really understand the price of energy here. Because for me, coming from Canada, I mean, we complain about energy prices there too. But when you come to Germany, it's just, it's a lot different. You know, it's a lot more expensive. Why is it Germany? Like, why is Germany one of the highest places here in Europe uh, for electricity prices? First of all, it would really be on the on the taxes. So there is this. I think they're expiring it in July now. But for a long time, there was there was definitely this environmental tax that you pay. Yeah. So the idea was that okay, the government gets taxes from everyone's electricity consumption, and that goes into funding more renewable energy projects. So part of this like energy transition. Another one is part just because Germany is like a wealthier country, and the cost of everything is just higher than if you like. I'm from the Philippines. It's like how when you're traveling, you can't make a price comparison between the Philippines and Germany. It's kind of the same thing for or most other things as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I think I always say it's kind of give and take here in Germany, at least in Canada, for example, when I take my mom's expenses living in a single household and the expenses that I have in a double household here or now with my husband and my son, we actually spend a lot less money despite the electricity costs being much higher in Germany just because grocery costs are a bit lower and our rental costs were a bit lower back then and you really can't compare it. I know Norway is also quite high in electricity prices too so I think they usually battle for being one of the highest <laughs> in Europe anyway. Even though they have all this oil it's like why is it expensive? I guess yeah it's like just the <laughs> purchasing power situation. It's definitely something to learn for expats and for international sets for sure. Another thing that they always definitely have to learn about is this warm Miete or warm rent here in Germany. That is a hard one for a lot of people to figure out and to understand. And when I tell them, okay, this warm rent basically means, you know, everything added into the cost of the cold apartment, you know, when it's not heated and it's not furnished and it doesn't have anything and there's no chimney sweeper, you add all of these costs in like heating and everything. And then that equals your warm rent. Well, it definitely differs household to household and landlord to landlord. But in regards to electricity, is this something that would be stuffed into that warm rent that expats and internationals wouldn't need to worry about? Or is this something that they need to consider and learn about? I think electricity, it's much more common for the renter, like the end user to pay for it. Yeah. Whereas I think water and gas are usually the ones that would be included in the warm rent. I've had like two apartments here and um, both times electricity was not included and then the gas was included. So we all do like a support chat. So we all answer the chats ourselves. I think it's really important to kind of stay close to the customer. And what we really see is that this is such a very common question. We always have to say, well, you have to kind of check your contract. Sometimes there's also this whole Uber Gabis protocol where you can, like the landlord has to say like, well, okay, I'm transferring like who lives in this house from the landlord to the tenant. It's a very individual scenario. It's, I think what's most important for internationals to know is that in Germany, there's this concept called the Grundversorger or like the basic supplier. It's kind of like a supplier of last resort. So if you were to do nothing, Thing, you would still have electricity in your house. It's very, very hard in Germany to get kind of like get your electricity cut off, like physically cut off. The drawback, obviously, is that Grundversorger is kind of being the backup supplier. They don't take into account in their energy hedging you coming in. It's usually more expensive. The confusion as well is that a provider can be both a Grundversorger and like have a contract with them. Somebody will say like, oh, I'm part of a energy supplier A, and that it's like super expensive. But then if you were to go to their website and sign up for their contract, you would still be with energy supplier A, yeah. but you would be in a much cheaper contract. The second confusion, um, which we also see a lot, is finding a contract and understanding what you will pay is also very confusing because they say the most common tactic in Germany is this like almost very bait and switch model, like similar to like phone companies where it's like, hey, I'll give you some free AirPods but you have to stay with us for 24 months. Yeah. And then it's like 24 months in, like, oh, I forgot to can cancel, um, you know, now yeah. now you have to stay longer, um, so these situations. But yeah, for Varmite, it's uh, usually not included from our experience so far. Yeah, I think in my experience, it was the same. We've recently purchased a house, and so we and we've moved in here now, and we've had to tell some of our tenants that they needed to move out so we could move in, and the electricity was still running, you know? And I'm like... I, I just forgot and was like, why is it still running? And ah, Grundversorgung. <laughs> so, and you got to be really quick. I know that I think it's a 14 day cutoff before you, you get locked in at a higher price, right? So this whole idea of 
locking people in and, and trying to find ways to save money, it's really difficult. It's like a game. And I think for foreigners, it's really hard to know how can you save money and do you trust them and ways to do it. So do you have any tips on exactly the best ways perhaps that foreigners and internationals when they first move here can learn how to save money? Of course, for German nationals as well. What we see a lot is a lot of companies even they say, oh, here are tips to use less, like, you know, turn off the lights, etc. And we've been doing some analysis on, on this. And what we really see is that there's a certain baseline that you really can't, kind of can't avoid. What's difficult here is that sometimes you might feel like you're doing everything and then the bill is still there but like the biggest cons consumers of electricity are like your heater your fridge just things kind of like constantly run right so yeah. the difficulty in germany is that the feedback loop is not very clear so what does that mean is that in germany you say hey i'll pay 50 euros a month we agree on one year and then after one year you do the debit or credit right like oh you yeah. used a, a bit more so you need to pay us more or use a little bit less and we kind of give you uh, back. Well, for me, I'm, I'm from the Philippines. We don't have this, you can't give people this very long, like one year credit. So we have like a manual smart meter, you know, like a guy goes to the house, reads the meter and then sends you a bill each month. And then that, that your bill changes. Yeah. And what that means is that your attitude changes. Oh, I left the fridge on for a long time. I used the AC too much or I left the TV on. So you adapt your behaviors. Absolutely. And I think in Germany, the smart meter penetration we found was like less than 1%, which is like crazy. It's, I think in the UK, the Nordics, Italy, it's like 70%, 80%. You basically can't see on your phone how much you're using. So there's no feedback loop, meaning you use electricity for a year. And then in one year, they're like, hey, you need to pay us like 500 more. Yeah. And I think this is kind of like the illusion that consumers have that they're like, oh, I have a price guarantee. But then because they don't have this feedback loop, it becomes very, very difficult for them to know that like, oh, maybe if I didn't leave the tea on too long, I would have saved a bit more. If you use more electricity, company makes more money. Yeah. So obviously the incentive is that like, I don't want you to conserve electricity because that's my revenue. What we said is like, let's get rid of that part. It's like, let's have a flat six euro fee. And then that, that's pretty much it. You know, we have the app so you can really check your consumption right now. And what we did is we, since we know that smart meters are not very widespread in Germany, we just made it like really easy for you to kind of like keep track. Are you above or below your consumption? We extrapolate that. So I'm also obviously also like a customer. And then I think like last month I got like a hundred euros back but that's because like I've been doing the meter reading like yeah. every few months so you don't have to do it like every day but like even once in a while just to kind of like give you an idea of like am I above or below so you don't have this like bill shock yeah in one year and that's really what we've been focusing on like right now and we we see a good amount of our users definitely uh switch to us because of that yeah I think it's a habit change right I think for me I was shocked at the first maybe two years that I lived in Germany, I had to pay back and I had no idea that I was gonna get a bill that would pay more on electricity than I, than I was already paying. And I just, I didn't really grasp the concept. I didn't understand it because similarly in Canada, you get, you know, at the end of the month, the bill and sometimes it's higher if you use more electricity. I mean, in the winter, we all know that we pay more electricity and then we know okay yeah we did this and this this month and this is how i can change that also in canada i don't know what it's like in the philippines but we have times during the weekend weekends and in the mornings or evenings that actually doing your laundry for example or washing the dishes is cheaper so my mom would always say okay now's the time we have to do our laundry everybody bring your clothes down and that really helped us kind of find ways to save but yeah it's, it's a little bit tricky in germany so not having this smart meter that option is really difficult so I guess just find ways to be creative I mean I've also checked out my app as well um, on Ostrom and I think that it's so nice being able to actually gauge your readings and understand where your consumption is coming from kind of funny so my co-founder he was uh oh I'm, he's gonna buy smart meter so he ordered from a company took eight months to arrive number one and then he installed it and then another problem in Germany is the internet so he it's in his basement yeah. in the keller and there's no signal. So the, the problem with Wi-Fi 
is also going to extend to the problem of like the smart meter gateway. The other thing we see as well is that consumers don't change their attitudes so much. If you have to go to the office, at, I mean, nobody goes to the office anymore, but if you want your coffee at 8 a.m., you're not going to make your coffee at 10 a.m. because yeah. it's cheap. The electricity is slightly cheaper at that time. Now that people understand, you know, what process they need to take and, and ways that they can potentially save on their bills, what do the bills actually look like? I mean, we obviously already know that you don't get a bill at the end of the month that staggers month by month, but what is that process? process like? like? Can you explain the, the billing here in Germany for electricity? So the typical model is you go to the website, you don't know how much electricity you use. So you say like 1,500 kilowatt hours for one person. So like 125 kilowatt hours per month. And then you just basically agree on a price. You're like, okay, I'll pay 50 euros a month, for example. And then in one year, you or like their guy will do the meter reading from then on say, okay, you owe us or we owe you. What we did was like, okay, we know that smart meters are are cool but they're not widespread yet so let's make it easier for you to input the meter reading yourself so even if you were only to do it once let's say you did it like once every six months that would still be kind of like a good indicator for your consumption mm -hmm. because it would it would kind of extrapolate what your average daily consumption is for example so the more you do it obviously it's better but it's not necessary and then within the app with Ostrom, you can kind of toggle how much you're using. So that's what I've been doing. It's kind of, okay, uh, I've been using less, so that's good. I can lower my average um, bill or, oh, I'm using more, let me increase it. And I think something that uh, a lot of people also don't realize is that sometimes they're like, oh, I'm super happy. I got like the price guarantee and it lasts for like one or two years. And then afterwards, there's nothing to keep you there. That's why people keep switching because they're like, oh, you know, when I joined, you gave me free AirPods. Now I'm a five-year customer. What's in it? for me and like there's nothing and the bill usually becomes higher because the way traditional companies treat you is that well carl's not checking his bill so even if we increased it it's okay he won't switch you have to imagine that you're effectively subsidizing the discounts for the new customers i think that's really like the big problem and what we said is like okay well everybody should just be paying the same price. Why, why do you have to do this like price discrimination essentially what we find when we do this is that customers always have the incentive to stay with us because we will always deliver the best price. And what we see with a lot of consumers is that, you know, when the prices are going up, that's when they panic. And then they switch to a contract with like a very long price guarantee. And then the markets cool off and then they're stuck paying a much higher price. That's also part of the reason why a lot of energy suppliers are very happy to give you a two-year lock-in yeah. <laughs> um, because they're like, oh, okay, like uh, somebody's willing to pay crazy high amount of let's lock that person in and then they're getting like a good margin when prices do go down but i think for us what's important is that when prices go down as they do as well that as a long-term customer you equally benefit from that and you're not subsidizing um, just only the new customers it's kind of a breath of fresh air in this market that's really really difficult to understand i mean i already got two emails from you guys saying hey you know like it's cooled off a bit so we're gonna lower the prices and i was like hey <laughs> it's so strange. I'm so used to being locked in at some insanely high price. So it is, it's nice uh, to be able to experience this transparency and not have to feel like you need to learn all these kind of like back ends of how to save money. Funny enough, a lot of expats come to me and they say, oh, I have this really good method of saving money. And it's like, maybe my boyfriend comes to stay with me like, I don't know, nine out of 12 months of the year, but I'm the only one registered. So I'm gonna register myself on the electricity bill for just one person. And I'm like, you do realize that in Germany, like you pay afterwards for the electricity that your boyfriend used. You know, it's not, it's not some trick. I actually pay right now for three people even though my son doesn't use a lot of electricity because I hope that <laughs> we will save money in the long run and I'd rather overspend now and get some money back in, in the long run so yeah it's a it's a tricky web to kind of figure out what are the biggest common mistakes that expats make when they first move to Germany in regards to electricity and how can they avoid this I think what's common is that let's say you year one you were in the, in the house a lot and then year two you were in, in the house um, at all. And sometimes you might feel like, oh, how come my bills between those two are the same? It 
can be the case that the, the, the assumption just continues into year mm. two. They take certain patterns or they take historical data. I think that's why the bills can be quite confusing. For example, for my building, like the energy costs of like, you know, the lights in the hallway, for example, like those kind of get blended into your um, file meter. That's also one thing that happens. One more I can think of, or two more actually I can think of. A number one is lots of providers offer these discounts or these prizes and you all have to be kind of wary. We actually did the math and there's this one company that offers like a free Xbox if you sign up. But then if you were to see how much more you would be paying with them than let's say with Ostrom, for example, so you're basically paying 50% interest on, on your Xbox. So, um, you know, do the math, you know, you, you kind of have to ask yourself, why are they giving me a free Xbox? It's like, you know, they have to earn that money somewhere else down the line. They're going to make it really hard for you to cancel. They're going to increase your bill. And maybe the last one we've seen that sadly it's usually the foreigners in Germany that fall for is there's lots of these like scams. It's a very gray area scam, but usually some, sometimes what happens is uh, uh, an agent comes to your door. They're like, I need your meter number, please sign here. And then two weeks later, they're like, oh, um, I've suddenly been signed up for another provider. Yeah. So we know this happens because we've received lots of emails from people who, who said, hey, I didn't, I didn't cancel for Ostro. Why did you cancel me? And we said, hey, we received this report from this other provider that they've switched you from Ostrom to this other provider. And they said, please cancel that. I didn't. And then when we asked them, well, what happened? They were like, some guy knocked on my door. I don't speak very good German. Asked for my meter name number, sign here. So it sounds like an inspection. And what actually happens is that they kind of um, illicitly sign you up for another provider. And this is like a user acquisition channel for other providers. I mean, you can just find, find them on Trustpilot, like all the one-star reviews. And this is kind of like something we would never do because you, we have like flexible monthly cancellation anyway. We have zero incentives to kind of do these sneaky tactics because you will always be able to cancel. And I think this transparency is what keeps us delivering a good service every month. Like the Grundversorger, like the sneaky discounts and these scams, these are usually the difficulties we see with foreigners here. That can be really tricky. And I think for me, it was kind of like all of these things mixed that made me realize now I've made a move to our new house and we're kind of settled down now and I kind of feel like I never really had a entire grasp on all of our bills and this is stuff that my husband doesn't necessarily like dealing with. He's the German one so he's kind of always had to take the lead role on that um, and these are things that I've been really really good at in my life and it just frustrated me that even though I speak German it's still really tough to understand, you know, the ins and outs of internet and electricity and, and gas and everything and having to manage all of that on top of owning a house and going through all of that paperwork that I just realized, you know what, even though I speak German, I just want, I want to do everything in English now. Like I switched all of my insurances over to an English provider. I switched over to you guys to be able to have that easy English support that's super transparent. I also like I switched pretty much absolutely everything that I could switch who provided an English service because for me I just feel like a all of them have apps now which is great so I have everything in my phone now it's all in my own language I can switch it to German if I want to get a better understanding of what it means in German but it just at the end of the day makes everything so much easier so <laughs> I'm glad that I've made the switch and I will leave all of the links that everybody needs down below I can try to include my refer a friend code down there too if anybody is planning on making that switch but yeah if anybody has any questions then I'd say definitely make sure to post them down below and either Carl and I will be the ones to be answering those questions as, as soon as we can uh, definitely at least in the first couple weeks Otherwise, do you have anything else to add, Carl? Just want, wanted to add as well that um, when you mentioned, mentioned you already speak German and that it's still um, difficult, it's, my colleagues told me that um, German energy contracts, like not even C2 German is enough for them. So it's like almost purposely meant to be difficult, which is why we, we see it, you know, making it very simple, very transparent is so important. Even eight years later, I'm just like thrown in the towel. I give up. <laughs> I'm taking the easy route out because for me, it's the smartest route. So there you go. Thank you. Again, I know the topic electricity is not always the most interesting topic to be watching here on YouTube, but I hope that this has indeed helped you. Other than that, vielen, vielen lieben Dank und wie immer, bis später.